Are you a loner? Do you feel you have never fit in? Are you sometimes considered as odd? Well, maybe you're an Omega male. Who is an Omega male? The Omega male can be seen to be the complete opposite of the alpha male. He is the solo rider type of guy. He does not care much about the opinions of others and has no desire to impress anyone. He does not need to fit into a group. And even if he did, he typically does not fit in well. So it's Friday and I thought I'd have some fun with this video. Not that we've been doing too many serious videos lately or anything, but I just felt like doing something that I found pretty funny rather than something super serious. Now, a lot of you guys liked my video about Sigma males. Now, that is a massive deep dive into like the Sigma male subculture and how it just like totally embodies like fragile masculinity, but also like toxic masculinity. Did you know the Sigma male is actually not the only new type of male you might have been hearing about? And no, Sigma male didn't originally start as a meme. It was like a thing people believe in and a thing people still believe in, but there's actually another thing relevant to the Sigma male, essentially the mirror opposite of the Sigma male, and that is the Omega male. Now, just like the Sigma male, the Omega male exists outside of society, doesn't really conform to society's expectations but unlike the sigma male the omega male is more laid back doesn't really want to achieve much in life doesn't really care about pursuing potential women as partners and there's actually like a debate in these like bro communities that is it good to be an omega male and as we're going to see in the videos there actually are like videos discussing the top 10 traits that make you an omega male but they are very very different in tone one of them i'm going to show you is like pretty positive and there's like any negative things about the Omega males, well that's just the Omega males, you've got to accept it. While the other one it describes them as like social outcasts, shut-ins, people who are just very unpopular. Now a lot of you commented in the last video I'm going to talk about, you're saying that alpha males do not exist in nature. Well alpha males do exist in nature, but what you were referring to is the study about alpha males in wolf packs. So we're gonna get into that at the end of the video. But before we get any further, a lot of you say that you don't like the video unless I tell you to. So please like the video, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. That all helps with the video in the algorithm. Also, a lot of you say you miss my live streams or you miss my uploads. So consider putting the notification bell on. And I think there's a setting where you put like all my uploads on and you'll get a notification if you really care about my content that much. Also, if you wanna follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram, also my personal Reddit, come join our communities on my Discord and my subreddit. And if you wanna support me on Patreon, I'm trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible. And the benefits of that is that you get access to the private patrons Discord and you get my Nintendo Switch friend code. If any of that appeals to you and just wanna support my content, please consider becoming a patron. I also live stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Sadly, I'm doing that a lot earlier now. So sorry to the old live stream crew, but that is all archived on the Cavernacle Extra, my second channel. So talking about my earlier Sigma male video, you guys will notice that a ton of these videos are essentially done by an AI. There was actually a pretty fiery debate in the last video about whether the main video I showed you was actually done by an AI. The alpha male personality is the most popular. This personality type goes with the nickname bad boy, goes with the nickname bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. They are the guys who were quiet while in school and slightly nerdy as well, and were probably bullet, bullet, bullet. I personally believe it's an AI. You guys were saying because it takes breaths, it's not an AI. I still think it's an AI. They might just record these AIs with breaths now because a lot of the videos I was watching for the Omega Male stuff also had very robotic voices taking breaths. But essentially, if you guys don't know what a Sigma Male is, we're not gonna dwell on this too much, but a Sigma Male is you're basically a super macho man who does not wanna really conform to the social hierarchy. So he can be like an alpha male if he wants to be, but he doesn't really concern himself with like the traditional hierarchy that the beta males and the alpha males subscribe to. He is not in competition with them, but if he wants to be, he can be a leader. He can be very successful with women. These people idolize characters like John Wick and other characters like Ragnar Lothbrok. And you can see in terms of Ragnar from Vikings, is that here is a guy who is like very good at fighting and he's very smart, but to get to the top, he had to sort of like think outside the box 
and rejects like the traditional Viking hierarchy before essentially becoming the alpha male. They also love characters like Ryan Gosling's Driver from Drive or Ryan Gosling's K from Blade Runner 2049. These people who are like social outcasts, kind of, and I guess they are successful with women to an extent, although K's girlfriend is actually an AI. But these bro communities say that like alpha and beta are like polar opposites of each other. And now Sigma and Omega are polar opposites of each other in that both Alpha and Beta are in the same like social hierarchy. They're both competing for the same things. They essentially both want the same things. Some are just better at it than others. Whereas with Sigma and Omega, they both reject societal norms. They both reject the rat race. They both reject all the standard expectations of society and like go their own way. You can see why this appeals to a lot of men's rights activists. So I just want to play you two videos quick talking about the top 10 Omega male traits. So the first one is going to be like very sad in tone, making it sound like Omega male is the worst thing to be. And also this is going to highlight like what Omega male actually even is, where the second one is going to be a lot more upbeat and positive, making it sound like Omega males are actually quite a good thing to be. An Omega male prefers to do things on his own, cares little about recognition, and does not follow societal norms. He is not interested to impress anyone. Omega is often perceived as eccentric and illogical. Actually, they are skillful and intelligent. This is why they can do stuff alone without following guidelines or taking help from others. Others might find him stupid at times, but an Omega male is always clear in his intentions. He is often stubborn to break his habits or try new things, but he understands the rhythm of the world. Even though the rest might perceive him as impractical, he knows how to do things on his own. Omega male is somewhat odd in the eyes of others. He isn't looking for name, fame, or accomplishments. This guy takes life easily. Because of this cool attitude, he is often misunderstood by others. The other men even think of him as a fool. People often taunt him and make fun of him because of his casual attitude and unusual choices. He is the odd one among the crowd of stereotyped men. The Omega male is mostly single. It is because most women feel that he is not responsible or mature enough. He expects small and simple things from people which is often ignored in this fast-paced world. He is childish, impractical, and not in competition with anyone. His choices and decisions can annoy his family and friends. But he is enjoying life and doing things as they come to him. He is definitely not one to go with trends or even know what current trends are. He can be out of touch with the realities outside of his own. So when it comes to popular music, hangout spots, or trending clothing, the Omega is not the least bit interested. He tends to be very stubborn and sticks with his way of doing things, despite what those around him have to say about it. This trait of the Omega male causes him to be in conflict with others who are wanting him to follow them or to follow any one particular popular decision. Omegas are very laid back and easy going. And while the rest of the world is fussing about all they have to get done or goals they have to accomplish, the Omega is simply not concerned with any of it. You will never see him racing to work overtime or burning the midnight oil to study for an upcoming exam or test. His nonchalance in life can often cause him to be misunderstood. Many people would see the Omega male as being dull or ignorant because of the way that he approaches life. However, an Omega male is quite knowledgeable and understands how the world works. He is quite capable of handling his affairs well. Now don't get confused, he will never opt to be a leader in any situation but he can hold his own. The fact that as an Omega, he is not much of a career guy. He does not typically stay in any job for too long. Many times, it typically isn't his choice, it just ends up that way. Omega males tend to be unsuccessful as career men, not because they are incapable of excellence, but because they lack the competitive drive that is needed to be successful in many professions. They tend to be skillful and talented. As a result, Omegas tend to support themselves by doing different jobs. So an Omega would be very knowledgeable and skillful in areas such as IT or programming. Omega males are known to just say what they think and not be concerned if their audience is offended. For example, if an Omega sees someone in an outfit that they do not like, 
or see them doing a task incorrectly without thinking, they make a comment stating their dislike or disagreement with what is happening. There is no premeditated decision to be malicious. It is simply how the brain of an Omega male works. Even though this is who he is, and he means no offense by his actions, it still makes it difficult for him to impress others or fit into certain social or professional circles. So there you see the sort of contrast between those videos, but essentially what an Omega male is, is someone who doesn't have like much direction in life and is happy to go with the flow, but can't really hold down like stable jobs, changes jobs a lot, and then being like very upfront and direct, they're not gonna sugarcoat their words to anyone. But the contrast between the two videos is one says that's like very bad and isolating, and one kind of like shrugs it off in like, oh, that's just what Omega males are like. Kind of like normalizing like really bad habits and traits. Also, Omega males don't really want to grow up. They're really out of touch with like fashion trends and they don't care about that stuff. And they're happy enough to be single forever. They're not going to chase women. So I don't need to tell you guys that all of this stuff is like totally ridiculous. And no matter what like gender you are, you would have been watching that video and you probably could identify traits that you yourself have, but then others you don't have because all of this like male archetype stereotype whatever you want to call it it feels like it's based on like 4chan or meme culture and it just shows how like animal kingdom hierarchies don't really translate well at all to human hierarchies and we have to invent all these different types of stuff but we're going to go back to the animal kingdom thing a bit later so there are many people in these like bro pseudoscience youtube channels who think an omega male is a really really bad thing something you should never aspire to be but there are a lot of people who think being an Omega male is actually a very, very good thing. And throughout history, Omega males have been people who've invented great things, who have done great things, been great artists and things like that. So I'm going to take it back to my boy, Kaiju Kong. I've featured Kaiju Kong's channel a lot in these videos because he describes himself as a Sigma male and he makes a lot of content on all of this stuff. So here is him describing a typical Omega male and comparing that to Kratos from the God of War video games. And this comes to mind, this reminds me of, probably many of you guys know the God of War, the video game, God of War. He's represented by the Omega male symbol. Many of you wonder, but God of War, he seems really alpha. He seems really strong, really such a character. Yes, he is. He is the Omega male. Now, why is that? Because he competed as an alpha in the system. But the thing is, whatever he does in life leads to the death of the hierarchy. He led to the death of the Titans. He led to the death of the gods, of the Greek gods. He let, literally kills everything he sets his eyes on. And being that much, that powerful, it is natural that the hierarchy rejects him. It is natural that different groups fear him. And fearing him, they don't want anything to do with him. And that's why he becomes the reject. That's why he's represented by the Omega symbol. Many of you guys didn't know that, but there it is. One knowledge of truth. The thing is that Omega male, when you put them side to side with a Sigma male, they look very similar. It's just that the Sigma looks like the alpha version of the Omega male. Imagine it this way. Let me put it to you this way. Remember, there was an era in, in history of humankind where carriages were drawn by horses. And if you ask the man, what he would want to improve that carriage, he would always say a faster horse. Little did he know that a couple years or decades after there would be such a thing as a car. You are the car, my friends. You are the inventors of the world. You are that difference that the world needs. Everyone in the hierarchy that competes in the hierarchy, they are the same. All they do is maintain the current status quo. You, my friend, you are different. You were made probably to invent the next thing. You were made to change the industry, to change the pace of humankind itself. So my boy Kaiju Kong there outlining very nicely how Kratos from God of War is like basically the original Omega male because he's so powerful the whole hierarchy rejects him and he brings down the hierarchy because, he, I don't know, he's enacting his Omega male vengeance on people. Kaiju Kong also goes on to talk about like how we need Omega males and like these are the people who like invented the car while everyone else was trying to invent like faster horse-drawn carriages. So he's obviously showing the Omega male as something very, very positive to be. But you can also see here how the Omega male like definition is really quite malleable because we've seen how it can be very, very negative, but now it's being shown as someone who really like 
goes their own way, can like exist outside the hierarchy. And although they might not be incentivized by money, fame, profit, or you know, getting lots of women and stuff like that, they can still do great things to society and we need Omega Males. So I'm gonna give a conclusion about all my thoughts on the Omega Male stuff at the end, but another video that talks about how great Omega Males are is Psychology Hub's top five Omega male habits that make them successful. So apparently Omega males are also great thinkers. While others were busy in creating social bonds, Omega males were busy in their own thinking and ultimately lead to being immortal through their legendary work. Some examples of super successful introverts are Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, Warren Buffet, etc. All these people did their best while thinking alone. You might be thinking that these super successful introverts were actually alpha male, but we need to keep in mind that they became alpha due to their work for society. They were never intended to be an alpha male, all they concentrated on is to be themselves and enrich the society they live within. Omega males are great thinkers, they think big and create big to achieve success. So you watch something like that, like Bill Gates, Albert Einstein, all these successful like business people and inventors, they were all Omega males. But you guys might be asking yourselves, well, they also kind of sound like the ridiculous definition for Sigma males. And like I said, this term is so malleable. And Omega and Sigma are just two terms people tell themselves who maybe don't pursue like normal goals and everything. It feels like a lot of this stuff is just from like really fragile masculinity that a lot of men cannot accept them being less than I guess what we're all told is proper masculinity, like being a great athlete, being in great shape, being successful with women or being successful business people or anything like that. It's basically that people who aren't those things trying to convince themselves they are still somehow like better than everyone else, I guess. And I feel kind of bad for a lot of people who buy into this stuff because it's clear it comes from a place of like deep insecurity. And that is because of like this patriarchal system where we have toxic masculinity and all these expectations put on men to be a certain way. And then if you aren't that way, you feel like a social outcast. So you might start referring to yourself as an Omega male or a Sigma male. And it's just really strange these people think you can put anything into a very, very neat box because what if you're an Omega male in some respects, like you are a great thinker and you go with the flow and everything like that, but you really hate video games and actually prefer playing team sports or something like that. And maybe you're good at that. And maybe you might be like the captain of a team, but outside of the sport, you are like an Omega male. Again, it just does not make any sense, but we're gonna get into how ridiculous these classifications are and where they even came from in the first place a bit later in the video. So to outline a bit better, what is even the difference apparently between Sigma males and Omega males? Here is another video. This one was again by Psychology Hub, Sigma male versus Omega male. And most of the video just talks about like the differences, but at the end it compares them. Bottom line, Omegas and Sigmas both do well with mentorship. A Sigma will fight and scratch and claw their way to making a difference in the world, no matter what. Even if they have to work a day job for the rest of their lives and personally bankroll the meetup for whatever world-improving cause they are waving a flag for, that is not the case with Omegas. They want recognition. They need it. Ideally, they would be mentored or else be placed under the auspices of an alpha who can manage some of their expectations and impulsiveness. Note that healthy happy Omegas, especially those in a committed long-term relationship, experience feeling much more patience and a stronger desire to engage in long-term planning. A Sigma who is taking huge risks without a long-term plan is either untethered from the tribe, but still wants to make a difference by going all in or is punishing the tribe for its betrayal by withholding their warrior gifts. Holding their warrior gifts. Warrior gifts. When I said the definition of these things changed so much between a video, I hope you see what I meant with that video because now apparently Omega males who are like social outcasts and just do what they please, please themselves, go with the flow. Apparently now they all want mentors, particularly they want alpha male mentors. But in other videos, it's talking about how Omega males have been rejected by society and have been actually bullied. And were probably bullies, bullies, bullies. By alpha males. Again, this stuff is just like what most of you guys are saying in the other videos, like astrology for men. It's like looking at a star sign and being like, you know, I'm a Scorpio because X, Y, and Z. As you guys mostly know with star signs, even though like we like to joke about them a lot of the time, star signs obviously don't 
determine your personality. You can have lots of traits in one star sign. Like when people talk about Scorpio, which is me, they say certain things about like having a grudge and everything like that. I'm like, oh yeah, that is me. But then obviously there's loads of stuff that does not fit my personality. And then I look at another star sign and there's loads of stuff that I would describe myself as and loads of stuff I wouldn't. It's the exact same thing as that, essentially. Just think of like star signs, Omega male, Sigma male, it's the exact same thing. Now, it's easy to detach like the human element from these videos because for some reason, I don't know why, they are all read by an AI voice. And if you actually watch the videos, I probably didn't use the footage because I don't want to get copyright strike or something like that. They are just like stock videos of like people laughing or like people crying and stuff like that. It's very, very weird. It feels like they are trying to sell me something. And in a lot of these videos, they are actually promoting courses but then in others, they're not promoting anything. So is it just like a very, very easy way to maybe generate ad revenue or something? These videos sometimes are very popular. I've collected some of the comments from under these videos so you guys can get an insight into how people who subscribe to Omega, Sigma, Alpha, Beta, all these different types of males, how they feel about Omega males. So here's one comment. I've got some traits of the Omega male for sure. I also have a lot of competitiveness in me. I think one of my biggest issues is having the alpha need to get ahead, but my quirky omega tendencies repel those in positions to help me progress. I want success, but not social approval, which are kind of at odds with each other. This is pretty much me all the way up and down. I don't really have friends. They're more like acquaintances that I'm on amicable terms with. Many think of me as nice, but odd. Honest but rude, loyal and hard to impress. Many times I play dumb to the fact that I just said or did something offensive or inappropriate. And others will say, that's the way he is, or I should come with a warning label. I really don't get along with beta males, more so than the alphas. I used to think I was a sigma, but after this video, I'm omega through and through. Sigma is final form of omega. Sigma is super saying version of omega. <laughs> He's just real. He reads, learns, and knows how competition sparks conflicts and wars. He's just the man who strives to be the harmless water instead of the flammable gasoline that only fuels ego. He's the saint of the personality types. I do love how they are describing themselves because he's saying he's just real. I doubt that Kelly Reds here does not think they are an Omega male. Damn, I feel like a hybrid between this and a Sigma. Like this description is spot on except I've always had women drawn to me and I'm extremely ambitious and in many ways often come across really alpha. Although I usually reject the social standards and the desire to be a leader, which I viewed as Sigma-like traits. Don't know, but would say like 50% this, 35% Sigma, 10% Alpha and 5% Beta. Even for bro pseudoscience, I don't think you can be like 50% Omega male and 5% Beta male. I wish I could get some self-confidence so that I could finally be cool and maybe just hear me out, receive the warm embrace of a female. This is the sort of stuff I'm talking about with like the fragile masculinity, but also the toxic masculinity about Obviously, people, especially men, often go through these things because, like I said earlier, they can't really live up to the ridiculous standards that this patriarchal system puts on men to be a certain way. Omegas are what I see as guys who will turn into the wizard archetype Sigma males. I have a cousin who fits this well. I'd be a Ronan, he'd be a wizard. And when we work together on things, we do some really cool sh So I don't know if you guys remember, in my Sigma male video, I actually talked about Kaiju Kong's video where he talks about there being a Ronan Sigma and a wizard sigma you know as if this stuff isn't bizarre enough now there are like offshoots of different types of men i'm gonna play the clip from the old video just to show you what i'm talking about first type of sigma male started from a place of power i call him the ronin the wandering samurai who serves no lord in the social hierarchy he is seen as an alpha yet not as loud nor arrogant instead he possesses intelligence and is socially mature. He possesses many traits of the Alpha, but deep down never felt comfortable doing all the Alpha things. He can lead, but doesn't like ordering people around. He could be built to fight, but would rather use cunning or diplomacy to avoid confrontations whenever possible. The reason he prefers to go his own way is because through in social intelligence he eventually realizes the many faults in society, the pretentiousness and superficiality of it all and recognizes that to truly harness his true potential as a man, he has to separate from the chains of the herd mentality. The second type of Sigma male started from a place of weakness. I call him the wizard, by all considered bizarre and is often underestimated until tested. In the social hierarchy, the wizard comes across to others as a beta, because he is either physically unimposing or is socially awkward. However, he compensates for his lack 
in some certain outstanding way. He could be extremely intelligent in a certain field or as they call a savant of sorts. Now that is the Omega Mail for you. And just to even like prove how ridiculous this stuff is, even people who believe in it are saying they're like a mixture of all of them. So if you're saying you're a mixture of all these different archetypes, maybe these whole stereotype archetype things just don't mean anything and don't really exist because as you yourself are acknowledging people who believe in this stuff, you're a mixture of all of them. Because if you just list loads of traits, we are all like unique and different. We don't all fit into archetypes neatly in a box. You're of course gonna have loads of different things that you like. Like, am I an Omega male because I wanna sit at home and play video games? But am I an alpha male because like when I play football, I'm like loud and competitive? Or when I'm in like a work situation, I always like to be like the leader or something. So what am I? But these new classifications like Sigma and Omega male specifically seem like it can just be whatever you want it to be. Like you can be a nerd, but you can also be an alpha. You can be really, really intelligent, but also laid back and people like you and they don't take offense when you're rude. So we've been talking a lot about Omega males, but also Sigma males. So I want to pivot a bit and talk about like the politics of it and like the origins of this stuff and just how ridiculous it is when you take like the hierarchies of the animal kingdom, which exist in some regards and don't exist in other regards and try and apply them to humans. So a good article on Lifehacker by Beth Squarecki, Sigma male is not a personality. Nobody is born as a general or a quarterback or a CEO. We often like to believe that a person's character destines them for greatness. That's a cute idea. The trope is appealing because we can imagine ourselves as the chosen one. Now talking about the alpha male thing, before we talk about Sigma males, we have to talk about alphas. In 1947, Rudolf Jenkel wrote a paper about wolf behavior based on observations at a Swiss zoo. He wrote that it seemed to be a hierarchy with the alpha pair at the top. Another wildlife biologist, David Meck, popularized the alpha term in a book after studying wild wolves. He changed his mind. Actual wolf packs don't have that kind of multi-tiered hierarchy at all. In short, wolf packs are families with parents and children. The parents hunt and they feed their pups. They're the boss of the pack in the same way that human parents take charge of their families, making sure that the littlest ones get enough to eat, for example. Some packs have a more complex structure, but they're all family-based, not the result of cutthroat competition. Wolves and dogs do have a sense of hierarchy in their relationships, but it is not based around guys at the top being jerks to everybody else around them. Now let's talk about how this all got rolled into toxic masculinity the original alpha wolves are understood to be male female pairs but that quickly fell by the wayside when people scrambled to describe human society in terms of supposed natural law if you think human society is necessarily organized into a hierarchy with alphas at the top you'll want to be an alpha right like wolves humans do have a sense of status but also like wolves it's complicated you might fit into one place in your workplace's social structure for example while at the same time you have a totally different status in a friend group or in a community organization so the wolf comparison is relevant because these guys always use the lone wolf to describe the sigma male and of course lone wolf is a term that is used outside of this bro science one thing i would say and i was talking to people in the comments in the other video is that alpha males do actually exist in other species of animals for example the main one i'm thinking of is in gorilla troops where there is actually an alpha male who dominates the troop and all the children in the troop are meant to be his children because he has the privilege of mating with the females if a new child tries to join the troop the alpha male will often kill it this also applies to chimp groups as well and with bonobos it's actually led by women obviously these groups are all our closest relatives but it shows you that these things do actually exist but even in like a gorilla society which does have alpha males it isn't like a very hostile place for most people within it like you do have the alpha male being challenged by younger males but it isn't really like a cutthroat world if you even like look into gorilla species it is pretty peaceful and also the notion of an alpha male even in gorilla society is like the alpha male gorilla would be like really mean he'd be really violent to everyone but if you see a lot of videos often alpha male gorillas will be very good fathers to their children they will play with them they'll be very gentle with them it really shows you how ridiculous the notion of alpha male in human society is because it's meant to be like you're this dominating force who only cares about like conquest when actual alpha males in nature are really not like that to most extents. But where did the Sigma male stuff even come from? Like a lot of you guys in my last video said, well, I thought this was a meme. I didn't even know this was real. I just thought it was about like making fun of people who wear the jacket from Drive or something like that. But Mail Magazine did a good article. And actually, funnily enough, 
I actually contributed to a recent Mail magazine about Mac Tonight. You guys might know him as Moon Man, but they wrote this other good article, which is really good, called Everything You Wanted to Know About the Sigma Male. So the category of Sigma Male dates back more than a decade. In 2010, Theodore Robert Beale, a right-wing culture warrior with bigoted views who wrote under the alias Vox Day, laid out the pecking order seen in the graph above. It was to become incredibly influential within communities where men gripe over a lack of access to women, Alphas he described as the authoritarian hypermasculine elite, unfailingly confident and a trophy partner for the opposite sex. If they are CEOs, then the betas are the middle management, successful enough though not in charge. Deltas and gammas, I might make videos on these another time, to lower levels of male mediocrity. The sigmas, meanwhile, are the lone wolves. This is the persona Day claims for himself. In a follow-up post, he elaborated, the outsiders who don't play the social game manage to win at it anyhow, who are able to score the tier one girl without the aggro posturing of the Chad Alpha Bro. While the gist of Vox Day's dude scale was quickly assimilated into pickup artists' ideologies, the Sigma element remained more obscure. Years passed before anyone attempted to build a channel or brand on it. California plastic surgeon John Alexander took what looks to be the first stab in 2013 to 2014 advertising his book the sigma male what women really want on twitter and tumblr as of 2017 the volume was in its third updated edition but still just has a dozen reviews on amazon including one from an irate reader who accuses alexander of slapping the word sigma on a dating guide that doesn't even broach the topic far more sigma content cropped up in the period spanning from 2018 to the present day and it has finally surfaced in areas where it's more likely to be mocked than accepted at face value so that's the history but why need to invent and perpetrate this sigma thing fundamentally it's no different and trying to understand oneself through the organization of zodiac signs or hogwarts houses we want to know ourselves better and, and guided by our prejudices we seek that knowledge for a select framework of assigning personality of course this process tends to result in attaching to the archetype you find most favorable which explains why there's a lot of weird gatekeeping around this sigma title it has to be uncommon if it is to hold any power, yet every dork will want to claim he belongs to this group. It's introversion and inaction rebranded as mysterious and cool. The Ronin forging his path alone, whereas the rest of us see a loser who should get a life. Comparing yourself to John Wick, an action movie assassin with a dead wife and the entire underworld trying to kill him for the full length of the franchise shows a warped perspective at minimum. In his heart of hearts, he doesn't actually want to be an alpha. It's too much bro performance, too many hours in the gym and at the office, too basic a profile. Therefore, he creates the inner world of a Sigma. He is unique and fearless in his mind, and whether reality forms to this projection is immaterial, as he can always convince himself it does. So that article kind of just covers a lot of what these videos have been about. I particularly like the part where it's like, you just say the one you want to be. So the Sigma male, for a lot of people, and even like for you watching it, if you had to choose one, seems like the coolest one, because you have the best traits of like, the other ones like you can be the alpha male if we take like ragnar again which a lot of these people use for a sigma male as like an example he is one of the strongest he's one of the best fighters he has one of the best looking wives he has a family who love him he has a lot of friends most people like him more than the actual king in the show he's content with like exploring new places that's what he wants to do with his life he doesn't want to really play the game of thrones game initially and exist within this hierarchy and that's what a lot of these people see themselves as people who can be successful maybe they even will be successful but they're not going to play the game they're not going to do the nine to five grinding obviously ties nicely in with the hustle culture video i did on wednesday you know the sigma grind set where you just like disappear you do all this stuff behind everyone's back and then you come out and you show like you're so successful and it's all because of your sigma qualities but of course it all spawns from very very fragile men who seem like they have been rejected by like the patriarchal system or even just get into their own heads about being inadequate so they turn to this stuff to try and make themselves feel better like it's not their fault it's kind of like in the viking theme the predeterminism that like vikings often used to believe in is that like you cannot really decide anything for yourself like you are either like a sigma omega alpha or beta and there isn't a lot of crossover sometimes you can cross over and everything like that but there is no point fighting against it. You are one of these personality types. Like, you are one of these star signs. Your whole life has been, like, essentially set out for you. So feel confident in that and don't try and improve yourself. And that's why I said at the start, when it's talking about Omega males being, like, really rude and blunt, to a lot of people, if they believe in this stuff, it's like, 
That's just the way I am. I'm just rude and blunt. I can't stop that. I can't change that. I'm an Omega male. There is nothing I can do about that. I mean, I've been trying to treat this pretty seriously throughout both videos. It is also like hilarious. Like I do love the memes. I do love the things about like everyone's favorite film collection where it's like Fight Club, Drive, The Joker, and like a bunch of other films that apparently appeal to Sigma male loners. But at the end of the day, I just feel this ideology is like quite toxic. A lot of it is actually really anti-science as well. I talked about that more in my Sigma male video specifically. And I think believing in a lot of this pseudoscience is just not healthy for someone. And it's really not healthy for men. But anyway, that is it for this video. There are actually channels that talk about like Sigma females and Omega females. I don't know if you guys care about that, but let me know in the comments, would you like to see another video in this series about Sigma females? I do want to make it, maybe I'll make it anyway, but let me know if you're interested in that. Thanks so much for sticking with this video. If you want to follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to join our communities, Discord and my subreddit. If you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.